Good morning everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live. Today we're going to be talking with Dr. Lakeisha Chisholm at Verona Medical Clinic. Dr. Chisholm has practiced here in Verona since 2016 and today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people often put off. They yes. don't like to talk about and that is screening for colon cancer. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the invitation. Dr. Chisholm, let's get started by talking about why screening is so important in the first place. Why should it be a priority? Colon cancer screening is very important because it allows us to catch cancer early so that patients can get adequate therapy and adequate treatment. Um, our goal is to catch the cancer early so that it doesn't metastasize to other places and allows us to have great treatment options. Um, colon cancer is actually relatively common. We're seeing that people are being diagnosed with it at earlier ages now. Um, so we're really encouraging patients to get screened so we can take care of the problem before it becomes worse. Okay, thank you. And, and I know that some people don't have symptoms at all with colon cancer, right. mm -hmm. but if they do, what should they look for? Typically, symptoms of colon cancer include blood in the stool. Um, you may experience a little bit of abdominal pain. Sometimes you may notice that you feel more tired or fatigued. Sometimes patients experience more weight loss. That's not intentional weight loss. They're not dieting. They're not trying to lose weight. But they may say, hmm, I've lost 5 or 10 pounds recently and nothing has changed as far as my diet or my physical activity. Um, something else to kind of look out for with symptoms for colon cancer is sometimes patients may experience a change with their bowel movements. Um, the bowel movements may not come as frequently as they used to. Sometimes it may be more painful or uncomfortable. Sometimes they may have a little bit more abdominal bloating or just the, the caliber or the size of the stool may change color or change shape or consistency as well. Okay, so that's some things to watch out for. Mm -hmm. um, at what age should people start screening for colon cancer? Typically we advise patients to start screening at age 50. That's been our traditional approach. Um, more recently, we're seeing that people are being diagnosed with colon cancer at earlier ages. Um, so recently, the American Cancer Society started recommending that people get screened at age 45. So we may see other medical societies kind of follow suit um, moving forward in the future, but right now it's age 50. Of course, that depends on other things as well, such as your health problems that you may have. Also, your family history mm -hmm. plays a part into when we encourage people to start screening. So if you have a family history of colon cancer, we may have you start earlier, maybe at age 40. Um, if you have a first degree relative, like a mother, father, or sibling that had it before the age of 60, then we'll get you in for screening sooner. Um, patients who have a history of inflammatory bowel disease, such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, have to start screening earlier as well. Um, there are other diseases such as hereditary factors that come into play, mm -hmm. like hereditary polyposis syndromes. Those patients get screened earlier as well. So really it's a conversation to have with your physician, and the earlier you have that conversation, the better, so that you can kind of anticipate and know when to start planning to get that screening started. But just for the general population, usually it's age 50. Okay, good. Thank you for that. And does insurance cover screening for colorectal cancer? It does, and that's the wonderful part about it. You don't have to worry about any associated costs. Um, it's part of your regular routine screening, same with pap smears and mammograms and things like that. So from a financial standpoint, there's no excuse as to why you shouldn't be able to get it done. Okay, good. And Medicare, private insurance, Medicaid, all will yes, cover? Yes, ma'am, it okay. does. Good mm -hmm. to know. For those of you who are just joining us, our guest today is Dr. Lakeisha Chisholm at Verona Medical Clinic, and we're talking about screening for colon cancer. I would also like to mention that we encourage our listeners to post questions in the comments, and we'll try to answer, answer those sure. as time allows. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chisholm, I think one of the things that people dread most in life is having a <laughs> colonoscopy. That's true. But I understand that there are some other options available now, yes. and I'd like to discuss uh, those options today. But let's mm -hmm. start with colonoscopy. Can you explain how it works and what it shows you? Sure. So a colonoscopy is a procedure where a gastroenterologist will have you come into the office and they use a scope, which is basically a tube with a camera attached to the end. And they are able to insert the scope into the lower end of the colon and they can actually see on the screen what the inside of your colon looks like. And that's very beneficial because it allows the physician to see if you have any um, lesions, any suspicious areas, any polyps. 
And also the colonoscopy allows the physician to remove those polyps if they look concerning during the actual exam. So when you wake up, it's all taken care of and it's actually all gone. Um, and that is something that really sets the colonoscopy apart from the other forms of screening tests that I'm sure we'll talk about shortly because it allows for the physician to actually see what's going on inside of the colon and do more invasive things like biopsies and, and polyp removal. Um, so that's very beneficial. Good. There aren't many things that you can diagnose and treat at the same time. That's right. So that's good to know. How often should someone at average risk have a colonoscopy done? A person at average risk should have it done every 10 years, which is not asking a lot at all. So you have a good space and break in between having it done. Um, for somebody who is more increased risk for developing colon cancer, it may be recommended to have it done sooner. Um, also, we talked about polyps earlier, so depending upon the type of polyps that were removed during your previous colonoscopy, um, what they look like on pathology, the size, how many were present, your gastroenterologist may recommend you to come back and have another one done sooner, sometimes three to five years. But typically, if your initial colonoscopy looks great and everything's normal and you don't develop any symptoms in between, it's just once every 10 years. Okay, great. And because so many people put off having a colonoscopy, let's do talk about some of the tests yeah. uh, that might be options. Um, first, let's talk about the FIT test. What mm -hmm. does that stand for and what can it yeah. show you? A FIT test is an abbreviation for the fecal immunochemical test. And basically what that does is a little take-home kit that we give you here in the office. You take it home with you. It's very simple to use. It's not complicated at all and basically allows you to take an at-home stool sample and submit it to your physician's office and it tests for blood in the stool. So blood in the stool is a, an early indicator for um, possible colon cancer. So that's what that test is looking for. Okay, and what if your test is negative? If your test is negative, we ask that you repeat it every year. So it's an annual test, unlike the colonoscopy that's once every 10 years. Um, so if it's negative, you simply repeat that once a year and we keep a check on it and make sure that there's no blood present in the stool. Okay. And what if it's positive, then what? If it comes back positive, then typically we recommend that you go ahead and have a colonoscopy done. So even though a patient may be trying to avoid a colonoscopy because they may have concerns about it or may be concerned that it may be uncomfortable or time consuming, I always advise patients to keep in mind if your FIT test comes back positive, you're probably going to still circle back around to having a colonoscopy at some point anyway. Okay. Well, good. And there's another option, the Cologuard screening? Yes. Tell us about that. The Cologuard screening is very similar to the FIT test in the way that it is an at-home test. And so you do submit a stool sample and submit it back to the company that will send it to you in the mail. And that one doesn't look for blood in the stool, but it actually looks for changes in the DNA structure inside the stool. Hmm. Um, so that also can be an early indicator of, of colon cancer if you have changes in your DNA. And that test is done every three years if it's normal, um, but also very similar to the FIT test. If that one comes back abnormal, you still end up having colonoscopy screening done. Okay. And uh, how would I go about getting either a FIT test or a Cologuard test if I wanted one of those? You can um, see your healthcare provider, so we will order that for you and get you set up for it. Here in our office, we actually have the FIT tests on hand, so we can give it to you while you're here and allow you to take it home. As far as the color guard, it is with a, a different company, mm -hmm. so I typically fill out a form, I fax it to the company, and then the company contacts the patient and they mail you the kit and everything you need. And then I get those results and I contact the patient with their results. Okay, good to know. You know, it's human to put off things that we don't really want to do. Yes. We all tend to do that. So I'd like for you to address uh, some of the reasons that people use. And mm -hmm. the first one is, what if someone says, I feel fine, I don't see any reason to be screened for colon cancer? I actually get that feedback from patients quite a lot when I talk to them about screening for various cancers, whether it's colonoscopy or mammography. 
uh, prostate screen and they say, well, do I really need that? I feel fine. I'm not having any symptoms. I don't think I need that. And so I try to educate patients to tell them, well, that's why it's so important because in the beginning and early on, typically you don't have symptoms. And if you have cancer and symptoms are developing, usually we see that at end stages or later stages of cancer when it becomes more difficult to treat. So I always tell patients, you know, this is just a preventive measure. This is just to make sure everything is okay. And if there is something going on, we can catch it early so that we can prolong your lifespan and make sure you have a great quality of life moving forward. Okay. A lot of people will tell you that they can't tolerate the prep. Yes. It goes along with the colonoscopy. So is there any hope for them? It is. Um, many, many years ago, I think that the colonoscopy received a very negative reputation because the prep that patients had to drink the night before it was huge. It came in a huge container. It tasted awful. But in recent years, it has improved. So the amount that patients have to drink is smaller, and it doesn't taste as bad as it used to. And I've even had some patients say they're able to add a little bit of flavoring or maybe, you know, add a little something to it to make it more tolerable. But it's, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. And so I always encourage patients to at least give it a try. I think they hear feedback from, like, family members and friends, and, you know, everybody's different. I always tell people everybody's different. So even though it may have been, you know, tragic for one person, it may not be hard for you to tolerate it all. All right, good. And the thought of the colonoscopy strikes fear in a it lot does. of people <laughs> because they assume that it'll be painful when you mm -hmm. kind of explain how you do it. You think, oh, that, yeah. that doesn't sound very good, but is it painful? The great thing about a colonoscopy is they give you wonderful anesthesia. So you just fall asleep, and then when you wake up, it's all over. Um, you yeah. may have a little bit of pressure sensation or a very small amount of discomfort, but typically there's no pain involved. Um, I always also remind patients to make sure that if you are going for a colonoscopy to make sure you have someone with you because since you are receiving anesthesia, you will need someone to drive you home after the procedure. Um, but it shouldn't be any, any significant discomfort during the procedure. Okay, good. So it's not painful and the prep's not as bad as it That's needs right. to be. That's <laughs> right. And some people avoid colonoscopy because they think they're better off not knowing if yes, they have cancer. Yes, I have patients say, well, if there's something going on, I just don't want to know. Um, I feel okay. I don't want to know if there's anything going on, so I don't feel like I need to have it done. So what I try to encourage them to do is have it done and explain to them that the colonoscopy is so wonderful because it can catch precancerous lesions and precancerous polyps. And also not only in relation to cancer, but because the physician can actually see inside of the digestive tract, they can diagnose other things such as diverticulosis sometimes is seen, sometimes internal hemorrhoids are noticed. So there may be other underlying things that are going on that can be seen as well. So not just screening for the cancer. Um, so I would just encourage people to, to give it a thought, and if they have any hesitations, always talk to your healthcare provider, always ask questions. I know it's very convenient for people to look up things on Google and search things, so if you come across anything that may be confusing or you don't understand, always go back to your healthcare professional, let them answer those questions for you so you can get the best information and make a, a good decision. Good advice. Just a few more questions. Okay. Besides the screening test that we've talked about, is there anything else we can do to lower our risk for colon cancer? Absolutely. Thank you for asking that question. That's a great question. Um, I know it kind of sounds obvious or maybe cliche, but just basic things like eating healthy, exercising, um, maintaining a healthy weight, decreasing your risk of um, smoking and decreasing your use of alcohol also helps decrease the risk for developing colon cancer. We are seeing studies that have come out recently that show that eating processed meats and red meats actually increases your risk of developing colon cancer. Those things are considered to be carcinogenic, so making sure you keep that to a minimum as well and just exercising and being healthy and making sure you put the right things in your body. Okay, good. Uh, well, it's, if someone is interested in learning more or perhaps you've convinced them <laughs> that it's time to take care of this, we've shared your clinic information in the comments awesome. below. thank you. And it's about time for us to wrap up. Thank you, Dr. Chisholm, for mm -hmm. spending time with us today. Before we go, is there anything you'd like to add? 
I would just encourage patients to make sure that they stay in regular contact with a healthcare provider. Make sure you're having your annual exams and checkups. Make sure you discuss with them what your risk is for colon cancer so you can have a plan moving forward as to when you should start the screening. And it's just good to have an idea of what options are available because what fits one person may not fit the next person. And the most important thing is to actually get it done. And that way we can help you the best that we can with the best information. Great. Thank you. Just a reminder that this Facebook Live will remain on our page. So please share it with anyone you think might be interested. And thank you again, Dr. Thank Chisholm. You. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Have a great rest of your day.